There's something called cat's paw liability, and I'll explain to you um, how that term was derived in a minute. Um, employers may be subject to cat's paw liability if the decision to terminate an employee is based on information, even true information, that has been reported by a supervisor with a discriminatory or retaliatory motive. That is true. And this is a little bit scary for employers, but please take note. Under this theory of liability, a good faith decision by an employer to terminate an employee or take any adverse action against an employee may be tainted, may be unlawful, if the information on which that decision is based was provided with an employee with unlawful motives. The Supreme Court has spoken on this. The First Circuit has spoken on this. Cat's paw liability is from a fable where a cunning and hungry monkey wanted to eat chestnuts that were roasting in a fire and persuaded a cat to reach in with its paws and retrieve the, ch cook, the cooked chestnuts. And the, the, uh, the cunning monkey then, of course, dined on these sumptuous chestnuts while the, while the cat was licking its scorched paws. So um, the analogy here is that an a, a supervisor or coworker who's the cunning monkey uh, might give you information about an employee to persuade you as <clears throat> the guileless cat to reach into the fire and terminate that person or make adverse or, or, or provide or um, take some adverse action against them. You do that, you get burned, even if your motive is completely in good faith. So what's the message? The message is be super careful, obviously. If you get information from a coworker or a supervisor that is a basis for adverse action or termination, you are required as the employer, as the decision maker, whether you're an HR, you're an owner, you're the CFO, who's, whoever is responsible for making dis employment decisions, to fully investigate. Not only make sure the information is true, but make sure that other people, other workers, who have committed similar infractions have been treated the same way that you're treating this employee. In, uh, in the new case in the First Circuit that came down recently, what happened was that um, it was true that the employee who was ultimately terminated had um, fal falsified their timesheets. They were putting more time on their timesheet than they were actually working, uh, 15 minutes a day, which obviously adds up. And <clears throat> the supervisor turned them in, the employer terminated them accordingly, the employee then brought a suit saying, well, wait a minute, although that was true, and I, I, I don't deny it, my supervisor gave you this information because my supervisor was angry at me and wanted to retaliate against me for uh, using my protected rights under the FMLA. My supervisor was annoyed that I took time off. Now, as it turns out in that particular case, they were not able to prove, the plaintiff was not able to prove the unlawful motivation by the supervisor. But the court confirmed that should the employee be able to prove unlawful motivation by the supervisor, providing the information on which the decision to take adverse action was based, if the employee could prove that unlawful motivation, then even though the decision maker and the employer made the decision in good faith based on information that was true, they still could be held liable for the unlawful motives of the person who provided that information, the cutting monkey. So please, as always, I just warn you, be super careful. Do your own investigation. Make sure similarly situated people are being dealt with in the same way.